And we are live. Welcome to another episode of Pot Splits, episode number 10. And today we have Jimmy Zier Shooter from the Spacebox project, uh, which is a Bitcoin and Lightning Network full node that can run completely off the grid. And joining us is Anita Posh, who's a podcaster and also um, has been traveling Africa a lot and has been releasing some podcast episodes about her experience there. So she's joining the conversation as well. We are using Jitsi again to stream this episode. Uh, I'm sorry again for last week's poor audio. Um, there was a bug in Jitsi, which has been fixed. Jitsi is an open source software, so sometimes it's not as fast as commercial software, but it's still free and it doesn't save your data. So um, thank you for your patience, and I hope this time it's better. So um, Spacebox, Shuta and Anita, First, we're going to see a presentation about the space box. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the YouTube channel or join us on Metamost. It's mm.fulmo.org and it's the channel Pod Splits, which is a Slack alternative. It's also open source and you can join our community channel there. As I said, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them also on Twitter using the hashtag Pod Splits. And that's it for now. If you like this episode, give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. And without much further ado, I present you, Shuta, your stage. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm so excited about this opportunity to share something I'm very passionate about, something I'm very excited about because of the impact that is going to be having across Africa. I've spent most of my life, in fact, all of my life in Africa with occasional um, traveling out now and then. But having been here for so long, I have watched a whole lot of developments across Africa. And um, unfortunately, not much has happened in the past 30 years or 40 years, and we are still almost where we are. Okay, so um, I embraced Bitcoin technology in 2016, and ever since I've always wanted more and more of what Bitcoin can do, not just for me, but for my countrymen that are living under the same kind of condition that I also live in Nigeria and across Africa. And um, I had always wanted to participate more in the Bitcoin um, ecosystem beyond trading the assets or speculating them. And I, at some point, tried to see if I could run uh, mining uh, software that could help me to participate more actively in the network, but that wasn't possible. I came in quite late and um, I was always looking out and researching for development. And luckily enough for me, a few months ago, I stumbled on the Raspberry's, Raspberry Bliss project. And um, I quickly jumped at it because I had been playing around with uh, Raspberry Pi for a couple of years, doing all kinds of uh, projects with them that not connected with. Uh, um, the cryptocurrency industry. So when I saw Raspberry Blitz software, I was excited and I quickly um, downloaded it and um, set it up and I tried it and it worked and I was excited. And I'm still excited because my node is still on and running off uh, Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig. And I began thinking, how do we um, increase our participation on the Bitcoin um, ecosystem because the same conditions that prevented me from being able to run uh, mining equipment also prevented a whole lot of other people. And I began to think, how can we participate up apart from mining? Africa has peculiar challenges and insufficient electricity is one of them. Okay, so 
I, I came up with the concept of the space box as a way of providing more opportunities for more participation for Africans and every other person that is living in in the emerging economics across sub-Saharan Africa and anywhere in the world. So the vision of the space box is basically to educate and train capable node operators across Africa who can then help small communities maintain family and friend nodes and maintain financial sovereignty. Now, the reason why I, I uh, came out of this vision is because Africa's failing economies provides little or no opportunity for her citizens. And every day people are trying to barely survive. People are trying to do all kinds of things to um, get by. And Bitcoin has been a big game changer for a lot of people who came into it. And for us in Africa, it's it's one of those things that you, you can say that people have been waiting for for years and it happened. And, we couldn't get in early but the opportunities keeps coming for us to identify where we can play so um amidst all the major challenges that we normally face across africa which has to do with electricity problems bad political or failed political systems in lack of adequate internet access low cost low source of income for people 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 don't have enough to do the things that they ordinarily would have loved to do. Okay, so, but out of such um, challenges also, we have a lot of innovation going on and people are always thinking. There are people like myself out there, a lot of people who are thinking and innovating different ways, not just to survive, but also to create opportunities for other people, solving problems every now and then. Okay, so, this is one of such contributions that one is uh, privileged to uh, have and I'm always happy to present it to the world. So I've already talked about the lack of electricity. Um, world Bank data shows that one in three persons across Africa lack access to electricity. And that one in three persons results in about 620 million people who still do not have access to affordable reliable, sustainable, modern electricity. Okay, so you can now understand how that lack of electricity, because mining Bitcoin is electricity, not just electricity, but cheap electricity is a must, unless you just want to burn your fingers. So I, I believe that because Raspberry Pi is a one, a low cost hardware, secondly, it's a low power consumption hardware. Thirdly, it is very small, very light, and it's affordable for the majority of people. So a Raspberry Pi 4 is approximately about $75. I know that $75 in Africa is also a lot of money, okay? But then it's, it's a lot, lot cheaper than what one would have spent if it was um, looking for money to buy a high-end computer or buy a mining machine, a hardware that he can use in trying his hands on mining. Okay, so the play space box project consists of three major components. The Raspberry Pi itself, Pi 4, um, two gig runs, but 4 gig is a lot better because of the services that um, the Raspberry project has loaded in its software. So you have the, the, the hardware itself, which is the Raspberry Pi, then the Raspberry Blitz, which is the software developed by um, Ruzo. Ruzo is um, a very brilliant um, uh, developer that works tirelessly to build this house on too. Shout out to you, Ruzo. I know you're listening. Then the, the solar kit itself, which um, comprises of a solar panel, a charge regulator, and um, batteries, with also an option for you to use an inverter system to um, have a uh, source from alternative power. 
So Africa has a whole lot of abundant resources. And one of those things that they have in abundance is sunshine. Everywhere, all year round, experiences sunshine across Africa. It doesn't matter the part of Africa you are. All year round, we have abundant um, sunshine. So we can use this sunshine to power thousands of Bitcoin nodes running lightning demons on cheap Raspberry Pi 4 across Africa, enabled by the Raspberry software suite. So it's something that came to me, and I, I believe that it will work, and uh, we're already in the process of making it work. So currently, in Africa, if you go to the, the Node um, Explorer, and uh, you want to take a look at the node distributions as Africa, it will um, surprise you that um, much of Africa can actually still be described as tabula rasasa of um, nodes. There are barely uh, up to 10 nodes across Africa at this time. So this is what we're looking at now. So before, we are assuming that we have at least 10, at most 10 nodes that have come out live on uh, African continent. But after this time, we we'll want to see much more of stuff like this on this after passing. So the plan here and the vision here is that in the next 12 months, we should be able to distribute at least a thousand Bitcoin network nodes running on Raspberry Pi across Africa. Okay, so the space box, of course, is aimed at increasing the participation of Africans and most developing uh, people across the world in the multi-billion dollar Bitcoin industry. Bitcoin industry is big. Apart from the mining industry, there are so many other aspects of it, the software, the entrepreneurship aspect of it, the, 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 the asset management as, aspect of it. So there are so much that people can participate in in the Bitcoin industry. So this will provide that opportunity for people. Then you have the space box being uh, put out there to empower families. Like I said, when I started before, most Africans are struggling on their own. They are trying to find ways to survive. So um, not just that this project will be able to provide an opportunity for them to um, uh, run some of these nodes, but Financial self-sovereignty is a key thing that we need across Africa. Today, there's a lot of angst against uh, the traditional banking institutions. In Nigeria, there are a lot of um, uh, 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 responses going on right now against uh, banks that are deducting a lot of money from people's um, bank accounts without their um, consent and their knowledge. Okay, so when people have financial self-sovereignty, you can't take anything from their purse without their... I mean, anybody who is taking anything from anybody's uh, purse without his consent, he's stealing it. And that goes on a lot around um, most of the financial institutions in Africa. So running notes by yourself will provide you self-sovereignty. Then you have even distribution of uh, Bitcoin notes. It's, 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 it's embarrassing and it speaks volume when you take a look at those um, node maps and see that nothing or practically um, very little is going on in Africa. Then, of course, entrepreneurship will rise through a project like this because um, there are a whole lot of things that you can do when you run a node. In fact, you, when you run a node, you are actually setting up um, a command center for a whole lot of um, projects that you didn't even think that you could do. So, so it creates an opportunity. Developers who have the opportunity to do a whole lot of things easily without wasting so much time when they're running out. So you could build applications, you could build all kinds of things. You can actually position yourself. I have another section for the benefits. So let me um, rush down. So what is in the box? The box contains um, basically uh, what's in this diagram. Um, it contains the Raspberry Pi itself, the solar panel, 
then a solar controller, then a battery pack with connections for a router and alternate source of power um, through an inverter. Now, uh, sometimes you can see um, solar power controllers that look this way. But one of the things that uh, one should be very careful about is that if the power rating is five volts, but it's less than three amperes, it cannot run this particular Raspberry Pi. So we'll try to make sure that we are packing our kits with the right um, equipment that has the right power ratings, which is five volts, three amperes, because the Raspberry Pi is gonna be um, running off some power for the hard drive, which spends all of its life doing some kind of um, uh, writing or reading. So you need adequate power for that. So these are basically the, cons the, the, the components that you find in the box. And um, here I describe them, they are, they are much more clearer here. So anybody can actually um, source them from anywhere you are. They, are. they are not difficult to find. You can pick them up. Almost every one of them is available on Amazon. Um, but many of them will not ship um, the batteries. So you could have to find the batteries locally. So it's available across the world and in most markets in Africa. So you can get every one of these things here. So we already started shipping them. We've sent out uh, a couple of the packages to um, Canada. We've sent to um, two countries in West Africa, and we have a few others. And um, owing to the COVID-19 issues that has delayed um, and uh, frustrated some of the activities that go on in the logistic industry, some of the hardware that we need are not coming in yet. So, but I know that we're going to be um, dealing with that issue as soon as things return to normal. So, what are the current challenges for Spacebox? The number one is the cost. Okay, so um, when you look at the current cost of the components, you find it that um, five hundred dollars is a big. Um, amount of money for Africans. So if, if we don't find a way of dealing with this kind of issue, um, we might find it very difficult to meet the uh, expectation of a thousand nodes in 12 months. So I have made some suggestions on how uh, we could deal with something like this because I consider a project like this not just um, an initiative, that I have, but it's a contribution to the entire um, Bitcoin ecosystem. It's something that will help um, strengthen the network. And I believe that within the community, we'll find a way to deal with the issues that has to do with the cost. I have some thoughts and I'll get to those thoughts in a few minutes. And training um, is also a challenge because a whole lot of people who have not been involved in the Bitcoin network and in spite of the, the volume of our voices in the different places where we are, we have still not been able to make the reasonable impact that one could say that, oh, you have like 50% of the people knowing what you are talking about. It, we have not gotten there. In Nigeria, where I live, people still ask you, what is Bitcoin? People still scroll past a post on Bitcoin without knowing what it is. People still have the wrong understanding about what Bitcoin is. The institutions that have to do with um, people, the, 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 the security agencies, they don't understand what this thing is all about. So beyond them, and even the people that we are targeting to um, bring into the ecosystem as node operators, there will be need for training. And um, we have begun to do something in that direction already through our our own initiative blockchain nigeria group so we provide a lot of training 
um, for people to learn about not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency and blockchain generally. Then, of course, internet connectivity is also an issue. But then, um, here again, is basically quality and cost. So, but then we're getting by. And then because it's purely a private sector driven initiative that it's uh, profit oriented, I'm sure that we'll get past this one because they will also, uh, the companies and the organizations that are responsible will also work assiduously to make sure that they up their game. So the final product looks like this. And um, uh, we want to have a ready to go kit. So all the components that we, you have scattered out here, we are building a one-stop integration kit that will have both the charge controller, the battery, all integrated in one box. The only thing that will be separate from the box is the solar panel and the Raspberry Pi itself. But every other thing that has to do with the solar kit and the inverter are all integrated in one single box like this. So um, a user receives a terabyte of fully synchronized um, block, Bitcoin blockchain. He gets a 32 gig uh, SD card that is already uh, installed with Raspberry Blitz version 1.5, 1.5. Dot one, depending on the version that is available, then I'm sure um, uh, Restore is already working on version 1.6. So when it's available, we'll test it and we'll begin to ship them with that. Then the integrated solar inverter battery kit, which is this one, this green one here. Then um, I have a reason that we there's need to stick to 100 watt solar panel so that the batteries can charge faster. So um, instead of shipping them with uh, the previous 60 watts battery uh, solar panel, uh, solar panel uh, capacity, we are now planning to be shipping with 100 watt solar panels. Then a couple of wires and the uh, power cables that goes with it, then RJ45 cable for your internet connection. So all this will be in one carton and will be shipped to the locations where they are needed. So there are tools that um, has also been jammed because a lot of people keep asking, what is the profitability of running um, a lightning node? And I keep telling them that it is not profitable because I, I don't want to give people false hope. I don't want to give people the impression that you could do this thing and in three months or in six months, you'll be a millionaire. No. No, I keep telling them that you can do this thing just for fun. You can do this thing just for love of Bitcoin, okay? But then it's also possible to end something by yourself payment run pattern to um, uh, huge um, users of um, uh, Bitcoin who might want you to um, route payments for them. So it works the same way uh, lightning channels work, but you need higher liquidity and you need to um, have partners who are sure that you'll be available with the right liquidity to execute the transaction demand. So uh, Rasblitz has Loop already. Loop is um, a tool um, built by Lightning Labs to help uh, routing payment operators. Then you have the joint market, which also is a tool that helps people to um, maintain privacy in their Bitcoin transaction. You also have the crypto advanced vector, you also have the LMB. So all these tools, there are ways that you can use them to earn revenue when you are running them. So now look at the, the, the re Reduction strategies that I think that could work for us. One of them is mass ordering of products and hardware. Of course, when 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 I'm buying just um, one or two pieces of um, uh, hardware, whether I'm buying the, the 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 solar panel or any of the components, 
of course i buy at premium but of course math's ordering will definitely reduce the cost then subsidized pricing okay as a community project one could expect that um we can have some kind of collaborations that could subsidize the pricing so that more people can afford them then it's also possible to work with grants that will help um, develop this uh, initiative further. And that will also cause some research to go in and bring the, the cost much, much lower. Then people can also donate Raspberry Pi 4, and um, that will help to reduce the cost. So if we have this thing running as one expects, what's going to be the multiplier effect? Yeah, so many of them. Because an ecosystem initiative, this will strengthen the Bitcoin network. That one is for sure. Um, it will improve even distribution of the Bitcoin nodes for Africa. Okay, so everybody will be happy when you go to the node map and you look there and you see that, ah, we also have them here. Okay, then it will empower the less opportunity and bank the unbank in several ways. We'll get to look at some other plans that we have for this aspect of banking your bank. Then it, it will spur entrepreneurship around the Lightning Network in a way that we didn't imagine before. Um, a whole lot of people have said that Bitcoin will succeed in Africa more than anywhere else in the world. And it's true. Uh, we may not be the miners. We may not be the big node operators. We may not hold the big bags of the asset, but then innovation on this technology, watch out for what will happen from Africa. I'm telling you that if we spread this thing across Africa and get the minds of people to focus on Lightning Network, you'll be amazed at the kind of innovation that will come out of this initiative. Then financial self-sovereignty for developing countries. I mean, I've spoken about that before. Um, we are literally on our own when it comes to um, Africa. And uh, government controls practically everything, and they control it for themselves. They don't control it for their own people. So because they control it for themselves, self-sovereignty in terms of your finance is a must across Africa. Then it will help to bring millions of new users into the blockchain and lightning ecosystem. I tell you that a project like this hits the town the way it's planned millions of new users are going to be coming in into the ecosystem so here um i have what i call a future plan the future plan of this initiative currently um blockstream will soon start shipping out uh, the satellite kit and uh, i'm hoping that i will get mine and I'll begin to experiment. I, I saw somewhere, um, Rutso had talked to someone to start helping us to build something, um, some kind of software tool that will enable the Raspberry software to connect to the satellite node so we can also run it in a box. And what would that do? It will help us to utilize the, 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 the premium package of the nightly node to um, leverage mesh networks that will be able to broadcast the same signal and within a certain distances people can actually run the space boxes from their homes without bothering about um, having to get internet access from the regular uh, isps so they will just the connection will just be from blockstream satellite hit a particular location that has a repeater and they go tenor or lower one and that lower one will be transmitting the signals to raspberry pies that are connected to the system within a particular radius the 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 mesh networks travels much much faster than wi-fi signals so you're looking at um three to five hundred um uh, uh meters yard so, so it's quite long and it's doable. So it's in part of our future plan for that. Of course, I have this um, book. 
it's a handbook. I always do stuff like this to help people understand difficult concepts. So I used um, a free book like this to explain every single thing that anyone needs to know about running these full Bitcoin nodes that never sleep. So it's available for download. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to make available the, the, the download pages where you can easily download them. Somewhere along the line, we also um, plan to develop a lightning payment app that is targeted not just Africa, but thinking of Africa and its unique need. Sometimes you pick up an app and the app doesn't have what you need in your own environment. So. Uh, if someone built an app, let's say in, in Belgium or in Poland or in US or in China, he is building for the environment, for the community he knows and understands. Okay, so, so we are thinking of building another app for our own environment, which will leverage the space box for um, retail payments. So um, details of all that are still in the works and they will be available as at Windu, but these key features will be things like um, enable people to use us to ramp up Satoshis into their wallets, enable uh, ramps of altcoin as Satoshis into wallets. Um, then when you have your, your wallet funded, you can easily pay for goods and services on chain or uh, off chain. You could enable invoice creation of any kind on lightning payments. You can pay any invoice. You can Betting is a big business in Africa. And um, if we can bring lightning payments into betting, cable TV payment, electricity, utilities, car businesses, if we can make it possible, I tell you that there's a huge market for such an app. And we are hoping that we build that. So the app is currently in production. We have a couple of um, people that are already working on the app and um, it will be released um, as at when do. So I promise I'm going to spend just about 30 minutes on my presentation. And I think I have kept that promise. So thank you so much for listening. And I want to welcome as many questions as you will have. And I'll try to answer all or some of them as much as possible. Thank you so much, Jeff, for having me tonight. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, just to get some better audio video quality, could you turn off the presentation before we go into the questions? And you can also switch it okay. back on later. OK, um, thanks. OK. I will try to switch on my camera once again. Um, I did have some technical difficulties in the meantime. But, um, I'm not sure if it works properly. Um, in any case, so thank you again. Is it working for you, my audio? Yeah. Yeah, it's OK. Oh, OK, cool. Perfect. Um, awesome. So um, if you have any questions now is a good time to ask um, we already have some questions in the channel but maybe anita also sure. do you want to jump in right now i can just start off the some questions from okay. the youtube okay. channel so okay i'm waiting um, for questions okay um so one of the easier ones, I would say, uh, is a question from George. He's asking whether you ship the space box to South Africa. Okay. Um, we could speak ship to South Africa without any problem at all because um, the, the very first challenging order I got from for this product came from British Columbia, one tiny island uh, in uh, Canada and we successfully shift to that location. Uh, it took approximately 15 days to get there because of this COVID issue. It was DHL. So South Africa, definitely we will ship to South Africa. And I don't expect that it will be um, longer than um, uh, 10 business days. 
Okay, great. And another question from Magoon is will you ship to Malawi? Speaking of okay. shipping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely we will because um, the logistic partner we, we are using currently is DHL and um, they have footprint almost everywhere in the world and um, we can always uh, find the, the the best option to ship to you and um, typically because of COVID, I, I don't think any shipment will arrive um, such locations in less than 10 business days. So. If you want to place order for any of them, you have to um, be mindful that um, they are non-regular flights the way it's supposed to be. So um, 10, working day, 10 working days works appropriately. So definitely we'll be able to ship to Malawi. Okay, so basically worldwide, if I understand you correctly. Yes, yes, yes. Worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's not necessarily limited to Africa or the African continent. No, 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 no. Initially, I, I was thinking that it's possible to limit something like this only to Africa. But of course, it's not practical for someone to, to demand for an item and you say, oh, no, we can't give to you because you're not in Africa. No, it wouldn't work. So we have people requesting. We have someone who requested from, from Spain. OK, so we are going to be shipping to Spain also. So. So it's it's though it's designed for our in own environment, but anyone anywhere else could actually operate them. There's nothing that makes them geographically uh, pinned that it cannot work in another location. Right. Um, I would like to open the conversation uh, a bit to like maybe general African Bitcoin and Lightning Network adoption. Um, just in one second. So this is where Anita comes in. Um, but we also have some, some like a bundle of questions regarding costs and prices, uh, which I would like to address. I think we can bundle them all together into one big question. Um, there's one question, after setting up the space box node, what is the cost of running monthly or quarterly? The other question is, can we have an idea of the revenue derivable from running the node daily? And also, um, Great initiative. What are the costs of running a self-assembled recipe blitz and a space box? So this is kind of like how much do we pay? How much do you have to pay to maintain? And also kind of what can you make maybe? Okay. Um, the only um, answer I don't have is um, the answer to how much can I make running the node? Um, I certainly do not have an answer to that one because I, I don't have the statistics that we're using cons convincing anyone because um, practically the, the money making option is in serving yourself, positioning the node as a routing uh, partner, a routing channel. And that means that you, you get to set a transaction uh, fee that you are gonna be charging people who want you to route transactions for them. And um, for you to do that, first of all, you need um, higher liquidity. For instance, you, you cannot expect to make a lot of money if you just have 0 0.01 BTC, okay? And you are, you're gonna be um, routing fees just with that amount. So it's, it's the transaction fee is not going to be marginal. It, it's gonna be marginal to the amount that you're providing for routing the fees. So, uh, then again, liquidity comes in. So let's say you have like five BTC or 10 BTC or even one BTC and you are taking XYZ amount as transaction fee for XYZ volume. Then it gives you an idea that the higher the liquidity that you are holding in your course and able to help to do the transaction, the better um, or the higher the, the revenue that you can get in terms of accumulated transaction fees. So that's how it works. So it, it's not like a, a system where you set it up and you go to sleep and money pours in for you while you're asleep without you having some kind of liquidity. So you set up the system and you put your liquidity, you sign a partnership with people who you're going to be serving as routing partners and that the amount of that can sustain the, 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 the size 
of the market that they want you to be helping out with. So then as you sleep, those transactions goes on there and your, your, your transaction fees are now flowing in for you. So that's for that one. Now, what does it take in terms of a cost in running it? The, the biggest cost in this whole thing is getting your, what you call the initial blockchain download, okay? The IBD. So that particular initial blockchain download takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of data. Blockchain currently, um, the Bitcoin blockchain currently has approximately 320 gigabyte um, in sizes. That's about the current size. Now, uh, across Africa, if you check what you normally pay for, for your data, you find that um, before you could do that download completely, you could spend up to maybe $300 or $200 in, in the download cost of the, the data that, that will do that. Because sometimes it's not just that, okay, you need to subscribe to 350 gigabytes of data. No, a whole lot goes on. So apart from the downloading of the, of the blockchain itself, there are a whole lot of packets that go in into uh, communication with other um, nodes that you're connected with. So that's the, the biggest amount of money that you need. But then after that initial download of the blockchain, every month, every month on a monthly basis, you don't need more than 20 gigabytes to run the node. And um, I have found that, that um, it's a lot cheaper. That 20 gigabyte in Nigeria should cost you about um, probably, uh, if I monetize it in, in 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 naira it should be around ten thousand naira which is about um maybe twenty five twenty five dollars okay so um it's not expensive running the node okay and then of course because it's a solar kit so you're not depending on you're not powering you're not expecting to run it with your generator or you're not going to incur except on days when the sunlight was not really um, bright. For instance, during rainy seasons, you may have a situation where the sunshine was not intense and it will affect the, the rate that the battery could have been charged. So in such days, definitely you may need to use your, the inverter option to charge them with your, your regular power. And in an hour or two, the battery is fully charged and it can do for another 24 hours for you. So those are the basic costs involved in operating the node. Okay, I found another question. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, okay, hear super. Uh, from web programmer, he's asking uh, to reduce costs. The recipe blitz would also run with an old recipe Pi free. How much does a Raspberry Pi free cost on the second hand market in Africa? Okay, uh, run the node, but because of the services that are embedded in the Raspberry Pi 4, because sometimes when you enable more services, the more services that you're enabling, the more resources that it's requiring. Secondly, a Raspberry Pi 3 has a slower speed of processing. So you, 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 assuming that you want to do it by yourself, because we wouldn't ship with Raspberry Pi 3, Assuming that you want to set up your own kit by yourself, the amount of time that you're going to spend in your initial blockchain download is going to um, be longer what, than what it would have been if you were using Raspberry Pi 4, which has a higher speed and a bigger memory. So what you are saving in the cost of the Raspberry Pi, you are also spending in number of days and probably... Um, uh, the, the, the data you're going to be wasting because probably Pi 3 may fail once in a while and you have to restart and start all over again and all that. So there are, there are cost implications that you need to um, look at very well and make the right decision. Recommended 
uh, Raspberry Pi is Raspberry Pi 4, minimum 2 um, gigabyte. Okay, 4 gigabyte is a lot better. And if you can get the currently released one, which is 8 gigabyte, super awesome for you. Okay, thanks. Uh, you've shown the map before from the nodes that are viewable. And in Africa, you said there are maybe just 10. Um, just a question of understanding. I always thought on this map, there are only nodes that are publicly viewable. So maybe there are some behind Tor. Is this possible? Absolutely, it's possible. But um, then again, you also know that the 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 places where you also see majority of nodes, they also have people also that are also behind um, Tor also. So if, let's say, in Europe, you have, um, let's say, 2,000 nodes that are public, we can assume that probably they have another 2,000 that is also running on Tor that are not public. So it is from what we see in the public that we can have an idea of what we could have on Tor. So you cannot, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that um, if we have only 10 public nodes in Africa, then we have like a thousand. Yes. Public. I don't believe that. Yeah. I believe that. So, so yeah. I believe that. Oh, shit. Okay. I think they are gone. Who yeah, no, I'm, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, we just uh, we just lost Chuta. Um, we'll just give him a minute uh, to log on. I don't know. Today is a bit crazy <laughs> regarding <laughs> our tech setup. I didn't change anything, but it's not working. Um, I think he's coming again. I just pushed this while he's coming back on. Um, okay. Um, I'll, okay. I'll address another question while. Oh, I am Shooter. Hello. Okay, let's. Um, I'll just drop yeah, in yeah, another yeah. question okay. in the meantime. Okay, okay, great. Um, so, <laughs> okay. Um, my next question would be more general. Um, you said you in the Bitcoin and blockchain space since 2016 or 2014? No, 16. 16. 16. And uh, what has changed in these last four or five years? I mean, have you seen uh, more and more Bitcoin developers starting to work from Nigeria? How has the community grown? Okay. Um, a whole lot has happened between 2016 and 2020. This four years has been tremendous. And uh, much of it is as a result of the work that we tried to do or we are doing in our um, community, which is Blockchain Nigeria is a group. Now, we, we um, found the opportunity to uh, take on the responsibility to share knowledge and educate people across Nigeria in collaboration with our partners across Africa in the last three years. So in the last three years, we have held about um, nine national conferences from 2017 um, to 2019. We have held national conferences, about nine of them. We also invite our partners from other African countries, from South Africa, from Malawi, from Tanzania, from Kenya, who have people that we have invited and people who came on their own for those um, conferences. And the result has been that we improve the discussions around blockchain technology and cryptocurrency more than any other group in the country. So we, we, we actually drove people's attention in the industry because the conferences we are not small, they are not child play. We hold standard high quality conferences and we attract relevant government agencies into those environments. And we, we've been able to be able to put the discussions um, in mainstream media. We've been, we've been featured on major um, TV stations, CNBC Africa, 
um, BBC London, uh, Channels TV in Nigeria, and all major news outlets in Nigeria. And that has spurred a lot of, of attention into the industry. And that, on its own, drives a lot of interest which makes people to become, you know, today now if you go and you check the, the, the Google search, you find that Nigeria is top among African countries when it has to do with Bitcoin. Things like that don't happen overnight because it took a lot of education, advocacy to get to where we are. Unfortunately, Nigerians and most of Africa learned about Bitcoin through a Ponzi scheme, which is the, ML, uh, the MMM um, program, okay? So most of the things that we did at the early stages were re-educating and reorientation of people's mind. Even up to today, people still think that Bitcoin is scam. But the education that we do in our community is massive. We have um, all kinds of initiatives within our community that encourages people to learn blockchain development. So we run, we're running currently what we call Blockchain Dev 1000, which was an initiative to raise about a thousand blockchain developers in Nigeria in two years. And it's run, we have a lot of people who are there. Virtually, it's running. And we have partners. We had a whole lot of partnership and engagement. We have partnership with IBM. We have partnership with uh, projects like um, um, Vite, um, Tezos, and um, Keras, and so many other um, projects. So, and we hold regular AMA sessions that brings quality knowledge into the ecosystem in our Telegram group, all through the, 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 the the period that we are having locked down, we've had weekly AMAs where we invite um, founders and CEOs of um, frontline projects and they come in there. We ask them any questions for one hour and uh, the, the content and the quality of discussions have generated a lot of in interest. So uh, I'm, now, I'm not the kind of person who tries to uh, play down on the impact of education. So we, we have a whole lot of people in our group that are dishing out quality content whether you're interested in blockchain you're interested in bitcoin or you're interested in cryptocurrency trading we have quality people in our community that are providing those content for people that's great and uh there's a follow-up question by michael Bowman. he says as lagos and nigeria in general is a huge fintech hub are you collaborating with any of the so-called traditional traditional fintechs there or in the innovation hubs co-working spaces with them them okay um before the lockdown we we had collaborations with um a couple of um, uh, innovation hubs and centers. And one of the challenges that we have about this type kind of technology is that traditional um, software developers are not very, very, um, they're not want to jump into an entirely new industry because, I mean, people, people take up skills so that they can earn money. It's not everybody that wants to uh, spend time experimenting or looking for new stuff to, to learn. So if, if you're already a mobile app developer or you're already a, a, a web application developer or you're building out some kind of uh, tech and you're familiar with a particular language, the tendency is that you want to stick to those languages. Not many technology people are willing to um, uh, change uh, the tools that they use. So. I quickly understood that. But what we did was to um, create another opportunity to get uh, people from the traditional technology into the blockchain space. And one of the things we did is to start the uh, blockchain the 1000. And we made the minimal requirements to be, OK, at least you should have clear understanding of the, the three major technologies for building anything on the web, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So once we have people that already have those ones, we can now um, onboard them into our Blockchain Dev uh, 1000 program. And it has worked, okay? And our plan actually is to not just um, collaborate with them in isolation, but also want to have a formal hub where we could focus on the one that we are doing, which is blockchain and um, cryptocurrency development, including, including Bitcoin which I think is ideal because if you have a dedicated innovation hub to that, 
it will work a lot, lot better, okay? Because uh, instead of trying to waste a long time trying to find a way to uh, plug yourself into an existing system that does not yet understand what you're building, you, you could create your own environment. And um, I believe it will work too. Okay, let's come back a little bit to the space box, to the technology, especially to the satellite dish setup, like with the block stream satellites. What I would like to know, as far as I know, up until today, it's possible to receive the blockchain, the transactions uh, from the Bitcoin blockchain, but not to send them up again via satellite. Uh, or has this changed now? Uh, I mean, the follow-up question would be, how do Lightning payments then get from the space box uh, into the internet again? <laughs> okay, um, I believe that Blockstream technology is tested and I believe that a lot of people uh, are running it. And um, if, it's, if it's a one-way traffic, then it wouldn't be a, a possible to use it to run a Bitcoin node because Bitcoin node has to do with a, a sending and receiving, sending and receiving. So it has to be a two-way communication. So I believe I've not gotten my own uh, satellite kit yet, but I believe that it will work the same way uh, satellite uh, broadband internet works. So you, are, you, you have your modem that has an RX and the, a TX. So the, the TX does a, a, a transfer of data while the RS receives data in, all in one box. So I, I don't think it's a problem at all to understand because um, the technology they are using, it's already a technology that exists. So they, they are using KU band and the KU band typically is an RS and a TX um, frequency uh, equipment. So so it, it, I believe that it will work in that same way. So I, I don't anticipate that we're going to have any challenge with that at all. Okay. Now, I just I talked with uh, Adam last year in Malta, and one year ago, they were only, it was only possible to, to stream the blocks down from the satellites, but not directly up. You had to link it over the internet again. But anyhow, there's a follow-up question by Annie Ruta Bose. I hope I say the name right in any way. Uh, most households in Southeast Asia already have a satellite dish, which is often lying unused due to new internet-enabled TVs. Is it possible to utilize this unused hardware for running a full node? Okay. Um... Primarily, um, running a Bitcoin node requires you to download the Bitcoin software. Um, Bitcoin software has what they call uh, a Bitcoin daemon, and you get the you know, to also download the, the blockchain itself. But then you also have to have an OS that is an operating system that will need to emulate and understand the hardware that you want to use. So uh, for you to use them on a hardware that has no OS that has been designed to specifically support the Bitcoin um, software will be a very difficult thing to do. So for something like that to work, um, some uh, engineers have to sit down and look at the hardware that, that's in question here and um, look at how to... Linus is always a best choice. So, but you, you, you can't just have a Linus machine and expect things to work like that. You need to like get the necessary library files if required to create the environment that will enable you to run the node. So uh, without knowing exactly what the hardware is, I will not be able to tell if it will be able to run a Bitcoin, but I know that you can run a Bitcoin node of an old um, laptop you can run a Bitcoin node off any desktop that you have at home. Okay, so because those hardware already have software that is already configured that will provide the enabling environment for the Bitcoin software to run. I hope that answered your question. So are there any other technical questions 
on YouTube. I'm just looking. No, nothing new. Okay, um, then I have a general question again. So I was talking with Tim Akimbo last week uh, in my podcast, and he was telling me he, he made a study uh, that overall on the African continent, the inflation is 50% of the national uh, currencies every five years. Is this uh, the same in Nigeria? And um, do you see more people using or trying to get hold of Bitcoin in the last month since the COVID-19 hit us? Okay, I think uh, Tim has been very generous in um, placing 50% in five years. I think it's it's worse than that. It's far worse than that. Um, this year alone, uh, the Nigerian Naira has lost um, up to 30 to 35 percent of its value because um, by as of January, Naira was still exchanging at um, 360 to one US dollars, but today is exchanging for 450. So from that, you can see that um, it, does, it wouldn't take five years. So if we go back to five years, um, you find out that it's a worse, it's a worse story because five years ago, which is uh, 2015, a Naira was exchanging for uh, 167 Naira for one US dollar. So in 2020, we're doing 445. So that is not 50%. <laughs> we're talking about 300%. Okay, so uh, it cannot be worse than that. So uh, it, I know that this story is, is the same. Everywhere, basically across Africa, is the same story. Okay, the political systems do not work the way they, were, they are supposed to work. And um, unfortunately, there is no sign that things are going to change anytime soon and that's the saddest of all and that's the reason why people need to take their destinies into their hands and embrace this type of technology that guarantees you some kind of sovereignty financially so you can plan and pursue your financial pr uh, freedom for yourself Okay, so any more questions? Jeff? Jeff, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking uh, into the YouTube um, comments. Just one second. Oops, sorry. Just one second, but um, it looks like we've covered a bunch of ground today and there's no questions so far. Um, so as always, we, we can take the conversation to Jitsi. Um, if you do have any questions you don't want uh, to answer right now, or you, <laughs> you don't want to ask right now, um, you can also join us uh, in a minute. And we'll just stay here, turn off the live stream, and we can have a little chat afterwards. Um, yeah, thank you. No, I'm getting some feedback. No, no, just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, so thank you again for, for watching. Thank you for coming, um, Juta, and thank you, Anita, for co-hosting this episode. It's been pretty interesting today. We also had some technical challenges, I think, um, even though it's episode number 10. We, we slowly get the hang of it. So once again, forgive us. But I think audio was pretty good today. Um, yeah. Um, thanks again for coming. Yeah. Next week, we're going to have Tom from Setspec talking about cashback via Bitcoin and stacking sets, and also a bit about mainstream adoption. Uh, Stephanie von Jan will be co hosting. So it's also going to be not only about African adoption, but global adoption via for Bitcoin via the Latin network. So thank you for coming. Yeah. I'll see you next week and have a good night. And here's the link to the Jitsi call. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, bye.